Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I have got five wines in front of me, which I don't know whether I should have them all in front of me, because in terms of a common theme, well, I suppose there is a common theme. America, America, God bless America. Uh, but uh, God bless South America as well as North America. So, because uh, we've got, uh, I've only got one North American, I've got four South American, two from either side of the Andes. And in terms of grape varieties, maybe there's a Bordeaux-ish theme, but uh, Bordeaux loosely. There's a couple of Cabernets, there's a couple that have got Carmenere, uh, there's a couple that have got uh, Malbec in, and there's even one that's got Syrah. Uh, that, does that add up to more than six, uh, more than five? Yes, it does, but some of them are blends. Uh, let's see whether I've got them in the right order. I don't know whether I have, because I'm starting with the tallest bottle, which is Septima Malbec 2010 from Mendoza. Surely you're supposed to leave the tallest bottle on the tasting till the last. After all, that's why they made its bottle taller. Well, I stick my nose in here, and it's toasty, jammy, toasty oat jammy berries, uh, neither of which is a positive tasting note for me. Um, it feels like they're, they're looking for size rather than uh, drinkability. And, um, I mean, I better taste it and see before I dig myself deeper into a hole. There is a bit of fresher fruit there. Um, it's strange, it's, it's got weird things like... Um, um, Almost a cherry moya, custard apple, uh, along uh, uh, in with the red fruit character. But the tannins are hard and slightly bitter. I've got a feeling that they've uh, uh, probably left this wine in oak that is too new for too short a time. It would have been better off using barrels that were a couple of years older and leaving it in there for a bit longer. What you've extracted in, in doing this is that bitterness of the oak tannins uh, and not given the, uh, the wine the benefit of the élevage element, the softening element in the oak. So finish I'm left with isn't great. It's on that sweet, slightly jammy side. The wine's okay, but... Um, it could have been better. Next one, uh, still in uh, Argentina, uh, but further south here. We're in Patagonia, uh, and I'm presuming we're in Rio Negro. Um, it doesn't say, yeah, Rio Negro. Uh, from uh, So this is Vinalba 2009, Malbec Syrah. Well, it's strange because they, um, I'm also going to use the word jam here, but here it's like fresher jam, if that makes sense. Whereas the first one was made by, made from slightly squashy, mushy berries. Here it, it feels like the, um, the what they're, they're making the jam with is things like black cherries and um, black currants, things that have got a bit more freshness in there in the first place. Uh, there's a bit of tar. I would have preferred if they'd um, picked the fruit slightly earlier, got a bit more freshness into the wine, but it still feels like it is going to be a fresher wine than the one before. And it's interesting when you come to taste that because it's got these rich elements. It's got this uh, thing, maybe things like vanilla, a uh, bit of cocoa uh, in in there as well, and it's got these uh, ever so slight jamminess, the black cherry jam, the uh, uh, the black currant jam. But uh, that that freshness there is holding it all together, making it a a, a more interesting, more grown up drink than the first one. I like it, and uh, I uh, I could probably drink a fair bit of that. Let's carry on uh, with the Malbec theme. So that was Malbec Syrah. This next one is Malbec Carmenere, or actually Carmenere Malbec. So we're over the other side of the hill here in Chile. Uh, so this is Caliterra Tributo uh, Edición Limitada Carmenere Malbec 2009 from Colchagua. And the smell is just classic Chile. Uh, blackcurrant pastels. I, um, uh, I don't know where it comes from, but there, there is just this character which is just so... So typical. Um, I don't know if you ever have tunes, you know, those mentholated sweets, uh, but there is something of, the, of that character coming through here. And um, I, uh, a bit of it, it for me is good. To, this for me almost has too much of it. Uh, so there's the intensity, it's very intense uh, aroma, but uh, it's, an in, it, it's an intense but slightly simple aroma. And again, I can't fault it for intensity. Um, it's got these rounded, kirsch like characters, but this this sweet confection just seems to be driving it. Um, I don't notice um, I don't notice class. I don't notice poise. The finish I'm left with um, is dry, uh, a little bit charmless, uh, which is which is quite surprising because Carmenere is a low acid variety, um, and Malbec. Um, it isn't huge in acidity if you if you grow it in a place like this. Uh, I'm just wondering whether that's, the winemaker's just been a little bit bit heavy-handed and uh, with acidification. But um, 
uh, it's, uh, yeah, as I say, I can't fault its intensity. I, I'm going to uh, go and taste this with some, uh, so, uh, with a local wine group later on today, and I'm very, very interested to see, see how they get, get on with that. Because um, uh, some of them uh, are like tannin and some of them don't. Some of them like acidity, some of them don't. This has got both tannin and acidity, and I've got a feeling that um, some of the ones who normally like tannin might object to the acidity here, but I'll, I'll, I'll report back. But for me, so, so Chilean. Um, actually, it makes me think, I'm going to swap the order of these, uh, these next two rounds. The reason I put uh, uh, the Napa one next is because it's um, 2009 vintage, whereas the Chilean is 2007. But I'm going to swap them around and do the Calatera Tributo, um, which is a Cabernet Sauvignon single vineyard, Block Quilai. And again, we're in Colchagua, just to see if there is a persistence of this, uh, of this blackcurrant pastel theme. Um, and when I think of Colchagua, I think of, of it as, uh, yes, there is coastal Colchagua where, the, where it's almost a bit too cold to grow Sauvignon, and there is uh, hillside Colchagua where Syrah and Carmen Air thrive. Uh, this almost feels a bit valley floor uh, Colchagua. Um, it feels like the grapes have got too ripe. So they are in that um, very ripe plum, very ripe berry, rather than the blackcurrant freshness. Uh, age has mellowed it, so it's five years old now and there's a juicy round vanilla plushness but um, uh, I, I, I don't, I, uh, yeah, I want freshness in my wine and I, I don't think I'm going to get it in uh, uh, this style of wine or for, certainly from these vineyards in Colchagua uh, but I'll taste it and I'm very willing to be proved wrong it's big, it's rich, it's juicy, lots of people will, um, will en embrace it but for me it's, uh, it's grapes grown in too warm a place um, it reminds me of uh, some of the things like McLaren Vale Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, they, uh, it, it, it's, it, it, yes, it does grow, but um, it's maybe not the place for for a variety like this. I'd, I'd encourage the uh, producers to go up the hillsides and find somewhere cooler and uh, um, yeah, maybe south facing away from the sun and because uh, there's that baked character coming through. It's intense. Can't fault its intensity, but uh, I, I I find it lacking charm. Uh, let's see how we get on with the final one. So we will get to Napa now. Uh, so this is Emblem, uh, 2009 Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, so Emblem is the, um, I think, I can't remember where, where it sits in the Michael Mondavi portfolio. Is this the entry level one? I think there's, uh, th certainly there are three wines in there. And I, I think this is uh, uh, the, uh, the baby of the range. Um, but because it's Napa, the price isn't exactly baby. We're talking... Uh, Bolshy teenager who needs uh, who needs eight iPods and uh, a new pair of trainers every week. I think. Well, I'll be honest and say um, I keep swirling and um, I'm waiting for for the wine to come out of its shell, and um, it's not doing. I uh, what I do get is. Uh, it feels like the fruit is on the ever so slightly overripe, although it says on the back 13.7 alcohol, so it's not, in, in Napa terms, it's not, it's not um, uh, way, high, way up high alcohol. But um, very little else coming through at the moment. Um, at 2009, so not all that old, so it may just be, it needs time to come out, out of its shell. Let's taste it. Well, it's perfectly pleasant, um, but... Um, I, th I suppose I want more than perfectly pleasant from my wine, and thinking about it, uh, it being from Napa Valley, it's probably far beyond what I expect um, a, a perfectly pleasant wine to cost. I, um, there's a bit of plum, there's a bit of red berry, there's, um, uh, but there's no freshness, there's no life, there's no vitality about it. It just feels to be there, a bit of tannin, um, and it will soften with age. But I, there's nothing there that makes me really think, OK, I need to watch this. I need to see what's going to happen to this over the next few hours. Or I need to stick this away in my cellar and uh, watch how it develops. It's just there. Which, hey, um, I want more than that from a wine. But um, anyway, hey, I finished them. I'm going to go and have, um, I, I almost feel like a drink of beer now. But um, I'm not going to do that on video, but um, maybe one day I will. See you soon.